Choosing the right hardware when it comes to video editing performance can be a bit tricky, especially when it comes to the CPU. Common knowledge would just advise you to choose the processor with the most amount of cores for your budget and then just call it a day. But as we've looked at in previous videos, there is a lot more to the story than just core count. Some tasks in Adobe's Premiere Pro, for example, are just not programmed to run in parallel across all of the available cores. So consider this video a bit of internal testing for myself. I basically want to compare the 8700K that I'm currently using in my editing and gaming system to the newer i9 9900K, which also just drops into the LGA 1151 socket, and also retest CPUs like the Threadripper 2950X and also the Ryzen 2700X. All of these CPUs are at different price points, so it should make for an interesting comparison both on the performance end and in terms of value. So the 8700K has served me pretty well so far. I've been using it for about a year now and I haven't seen much scaling in performance beyond six core CPUs like the 8700K in my previous testing, especially when it came to video exports. Another main reason that I'm currently on the 8700K for editing is the integrated GPU that can be leveraged as a hardware encoder when it comes to video exports and also for timeline playback. In my previous testing, this made the 8700K a no brainer compared to something like the Ryzen 2700X, despite that having more cores and threads, it actually did perform a little bit worse in terms of actually rendering out a video. So it'll be very interesting to see how the 8700K holds its own in DaVinci Resolve, which is another video editing software, as there the integrated GPU cannot be leveraged at all. Threadripper is also a very compelling and exciting option for video editors, especially those with a higher budget. I love the thought of having 16 cores to play with in my workflow and also the potential of quad channel memory, but my experience with Threadripper in Premiere Pro has been a bit average if I'm honest, but that is entirely Adobe's fault as we know. And lastly, before we dive into the results, I used the same memory kit across all CPUs, which is a 32 gigabyte kit of low latency, 3200 megahertz memory from G-Skill. And I have enabled GPU rendering and CUDA acceleration where possible with an RTX 2080 from MSI. So let's start with Premiere Pro and the beginning of the editing process for me personally. And that's creating a bunch of proxy files that I'll use to edit with. I got this tip from Dimitri over at Hardware Canucks and it has completely changed my workflow. Without proxies, timeline scrubbing is choppy even with a 16 core 2950X, but with it enabled, it's basically flawless even on a six core CPU. Now, although this does speed up my workflow significantly, it does take a bit of time to actually create those proxy files in the first place. So a typical video project for me would have around 60 or so video clips, and here the Threadripper 2950X absolutely owns. The Ryzen 2700X wasn't too far behind, but the Intel CPUs are adding a bit of time before I can start my edit. Now, moving to a larger project, let's say 200 video clips, we're saving about 15 minutes by going with the 16 core 2950X compared to either the 9900K or 8700K, which are virtually performing identical. In fact, the cheapest processor in the stack, the Ryzen 2700X, is quite the beast when it comes to rendering out proxies. When it comes to exporting videos though, the Intel CPUs are still the fastest thanks to that integrated GPU. The most admirable performer here in terms of price to performance is the 8700K, which I'm currently using. And with QuickSync encoding enabled, it's basically able to match the Threadripper 2950X and it's not too far behind the 9900K. Onto video stabilization now with the warp stabilizer effect. We'll also take a look at video stabilization in DaVinci Resolve in just a minute. But here the 9900K was able to come out on top. As I've said in previous videos, this effect seems to rely heavily on clock speed. And with the 9900K boosting to 4.7 gigahertz across all cores, that's one of the main reasons that it leads the stack. Had we overclocked the 8700K from 4.3 gigahertz up to five gigahertz for this test, we'd probably see it come pretty close to the fastest result. Also keep in mind that we are stabilizing five separate clips here at a time, and that the higher core count CPUs do have the potential to stabilize more video clips at any one time. So here we're looking at the CPU utilization during that benchmark, basically just confirming the previous assumption to be true, although it does depend on how many clips you actually need to stabilize in your video project. Moving on to 3D motion tracking now in Adobe After Effects, something that I do every now and then when I need to track a certain clip and maybe overlay some text or information. 
And here there's basically no significant difference between any of the CPUs in the stack. And finally, taking a look at DaVinci Resolve 15 now, and this is where more CPU cores definitely comes in handy. If you are using DaVinci Resolve over Premiere Pro, I'd highly recommend looking at the CPUs from AMD, as here the Ryzen 2700X is essentially matching the also 8 core 9900K, which is significantly more expensive. And lastly, let's take a look at video stabilization in DaVinci Resolve, and here we are looking at the time in the seconds that it takes to stabilize a single clip and Resolve is extremely quick at completing this task compared to Premiere Pro. So whether you're stabilizing a clip within five seconds or seven seconds probably doesn't matter to a whole lot of people, but nevertheless, the Intel CPUs were the faster processors here by a slight margin. And so looking at the results, I don't really consider the 9900K to be a significant upgrade over the 8700K that I'm currently using in my editing system. Video exports were pretty much identical, you know, basically within a minute of each other. And, you know, rendering out proxies were pretty much the same as well. And I bet if I overclocked the 8700K up to the same speeds as the 9900K, you would see even closer results. So upgrading to the 9900K, it's gonna be a pass for me personally, you know, especially given the very small performance gain for such a big price, uh, especially here in Australia, 850 Australian dollars. That's insane for the tiny performance improvement that I'd be getting. The performance on Threadripper though does seem to be, you know, improving time to time. Every time I test this every six months or so, Threadripper is creeping up the stack and it's gotten to the point now where uh, it's matching my 8700K for, you know, with QuickSync enabled on those video exports. And then when it comes to rendering out proxies, it is an absolute beast. So that is something that I you know, might retest when the next generation of Threadripper CPUs come out. Keep in mind though, if you are interested in Threadripper, you know, obviously it's not an apples to apples comparison because this CPU is almost a thousand US dollars, whereas the 8700K is like 350 US dollars. So with that money saved, with the 8700K, you could potentially buy more memory, more storage, and have a better overall system. Just something to consider. As for DaVinci Resolve, there were some pretty decent leads for the Ryzen CPUs. So if that's your software of choice, then definitely go in that direction uh, without any hesitation. And so let me know your thoughts down below, guys. And I think the elephant in the room is that the third generation of Ryzen CPUs are expected to launch soon. And I think it might be finally time for me to jump ship from Intel if AMD can deliver with higher clock speeds. I'm not worried about a one to two minute difference between video exports, but if I'm able to slash 10 to 15 minutes off of rendering proxies and getting into my edit, that would be awesome. And I'm really excited to rerun these tests with with third gen Ryzen down the line. And of course, whatever CPU you choose, uh, it must fit your needs, it's completely up to you. This was just a bit of internal testing for myself, which I thought some of you guys might enjoy watching and might actually help you guys if you do a bit of video editing uh, on the side or maybe for your main job. So I'll be sitting tight with my 8700K and my current setup until something else can come around and you know offer a substantial gain in performance, preferably in a mini ITX form factor around the same price. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.